Hello, I'm Estelle Bailey, the Chief Executive of the Barks, Bucks and Oxen Wildlife Trust. It's been a fantastic year for the Trust. We've taken on four new nature reserves, made another one bigger and we've spent more money than ever before on our 86 sites. In addition, we've taken our work to more people than ever before and we've forged new partnerships. You can read more in the annual review, but I wanted to draw your attention to the special places and extraordinary moments of the last financial year and how you've made a big difference to our work. The iconic landscape of the Chiltern Hills is just one of the areas you've helped us achieve success. Your donations enable Beebout to make Yost and Nature Reserve bigger. This is a fabulously important area of chalk grassland for wildflowers like the Chiltern Gentian and butterflies like the Adonis Blue. Yoston is now protected forever, thanks to you. The Trust has a great reputation for managing nature reserves and helping people gain deeper insights into the natural world around them. It was this strength of reputation that encouraged Buckinghamshire County Council to entrust four of their Chiltern Hills nature reserves to us. Across the three counties, we now look after more than 2,500 hectares of land for wildlife, managing floodplain meadows, woodlands, fen, and Heathland takes considerable planning and a lot of hard work. We couldn't do it without the support of more than 1,400 volunteers. Scything, putting in fence posts, driving tractors, leading guided walks and greeting visitors to our most popular nature reserves. At Wildmore Heath we cut back heather and gorse in the right proportions to attract the silver studded blue butterfly to return after 22 years absence from this important Berkshire site. We look after two of the three sites in the UK where military orchids grow, a species that was declared extinct and then rediscovered in the Chiltern Beech Woods. This year we counted more than 1,000 of these fabulous flowers on our reserves. Of course the wider countryside and green space in our towns and cities are important for wildlife as well. Working beyond our nature reserves is absolutely vital because of increasing pressures from urban growth and intensive farming. Never before has our work been so important. You may have seen the State of Nature report published last month. This made it clear that farmland has seen the worst decline in wildlife that was once common. It would be a tragedy if we lost all the turtle doves and skylarks or hair streaked butterflies of the field hedgerows. Our new strategic plan aims to increase wildlife on unprotected land and that means working with more farmers and landowners. When I see toddlers making mud pies or watching a ladybird crawl up their hands, I know we're doing the right thing. Investing our member subscriptions in our four environmental education centres is essential. We need your help to grow the guardians of nature for the future. Last year, the Trust gave 12,000 children the opportunity to be as excited by nature as we are. We also secured a grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund for a new Earth Explorers exhibition at College Lake, which will bring the prehistoric landscape to life and help us discover why this chalk quarry is one of the best places to see wildlife in our three counties. Bats have no voice in Parliament, which is why the Trust was in Westminster last year to campaign successfully on their behalf. Bexheim bats are amongst Europe's rarest mammals and they are thriving in the Burnwood Forest on both sides of the route of HS2, the high-speed railway between London and Birmingham. Thanks to careful research, the Trust made a brilliantly argued case to the HS2 Select Committee. As a result, 30 metre wide green bridges will be built across the railway and Bexheim bats can continue to feed, roost, raise their young and thrive. I have no doubt many other species of wildlife will take advantage of these green bridges across what would otherwise be an impenetrable barrier. Every day the Trust reads through planning applications that are likely to have impact on wildlife. We reviewed more than 10,000 last year alone. I dread to think what would happen to the wider natural environment if we didn't speak up for wildlife. At times this means challenging local authorities and developers, but more often we're working with them to protect our most important wild spaces for skylarks, otters and bats, and of course for people to enjoy these iconic examples of our wildlife. One of the most important pieces of work during 2015-16 was creating our strategic plan for the next five years. We have a strong foundation of which to build our work to meet ambitious targets for the next five years. We want to increase the area of unprotected wildlife rich land in our three counties from 6.9% to 10% by 2030. 
Restoring land and helping to connect more people with their local nature are two key goals. These are fundamental to our work and I am convinced that empowering people to value their local green spaces, countryside and wildlife will help us achieve them. Central to our plan is the urgent need to build more strong partnerships. We will work with landowners, health and education providers and even businesses whose activities affect the delicate balance of nature. By working with all of these different groups, your local wildlife trust will achieve our long-term goal to create an environment rich in wildlife and valued by all. Finally, I wanted to end with a big thank you to all those who have supported the Trust. Whether you're a member, volunteer, charitable trust or business, it's because of you we've made such a giant leap forward. Thank you.